Eek. Something strangled Rose. Actually that statement is factually inaccurate as since said companion of mine is still alive then logic dictates that the use of strangled instead of strangling is a grammatical error on your part driving the meaning of your sentence into the sphere of technical inaccuracy. Well do something to help her. Hang on, I'll just pop to the loo for a pee and then I'll sort it out. The tentacles of the axoid continue to strangle Rose as the doctor emerges from the toilet. There, that's better I was bursting. Now, let's see. The doctor pulls out a small pen knife and begins to cut into the green tentacle but it still won't let go. Oh well, that's no good, let's try this. The doctor stabs the pen knife into Rose's arm. <coughs> Rose lunges, twists with pain and her actions free her from the axoid. Why the fuck did you stab me you total cunt? Oh stop whining, it worked didn't it? Meanwhile Alistair has popped downstairs for a shotgun. He reappears and blasts the axoid full on it falls to the floor and vanishes into thin air. Now I think it's time for some serious investigations. Skaroff, the toy maker, the axoid, these things should not be here. The Doctor, Rose, Alistair, Alec, Daphne, Estelle, Davinia, Clive, are all sitting downstairs with Sir Reginald Blandish enjoying a nice glass of finest single malt. Well well my good man and what do you think is behind all these goings on? What? Something is very amiss here. Skaroth and the toy maker appearing and then disappearing, the axoid being here then vanishing when shot. It's a queer business. Well people don't just disappear doctor. Of course they do you dim tart, if they're in debt. However I think this is more a case of illusions disappearing. Illusions? Yes that is what I said. I think we've all been fooled. Those things we saw were illusions, something or someone planted them in our minds. You mean that old toy maker bloke and the monster were not real? They ruined two quality shags. Oh well let's have another drink then how's about a threesome with me Alex, Spitrost? Don't be vulgar we need to know what's going on here. Suddenly the lights go out and the room is plunged into pitch darkness. There's a huge scream. The lights then come back on. Doctor. That scream, someone has been like so murdered. And they all turned and stared at Daphne, who lay motionless with a knife in her chest. Daphne lies motionless having been stabbed to death. Eek. Eek. Doctor, she's... She's... Dead. What a bright spark you are. You have a great future at McDonald's. How could you be so? So unconcerned, Doctor. Monsters, mad toy makers, and now murder. This house is evil. Possessed. What a load of old bollocks. Look, I think I've just about solved this mystery. I just need a few more clues. Later, they all retire to their rooms for bed. Alec Alistair and Clive are in bed together. Ah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Yes. Nice. Suddenly they hear a clanking sound and the door is flung open. It's the antique suit of armor. Kept downstairs come to life. Eek. 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 Meanwhile Rose is in bed dreaming of a sexual encounter with David Beckham involving football shirts and fishnet stockings. When the door is flung open and she wakes to see a Zygon bearing down on her. Eek. Eek. Scene 4. Later that night the doctor has gathered all the residents of the house in the drawing room. As they sip their brandies he begins. Well, as you no doubt have guessed, I've gathered you all here to reveal the meaning behind all the goings on you've been experiencing. Great Scott. Gosh. Right from the start I've suspected that strange forces are at work, forces which have the power to create illusions in the mind. Dark terrors are dredged from the subconscious and hideous monstrosities from other galaxies evoked. The answer can only be one thing. The Rani. Suddenly the door flies open, and in walks the Rani. Slowly a figure materializes before them. It's the Rani, now played by Liz Hurley, dressed in black leather high heels, and carrying a whip. So we meet again Doctor. Well give her a PhD, we've got another genius. Hi huh, your sarcasm won't work with me doctor I've used an interstellar transmat sub to transport an army of aliens here soon the earth will be plunged into chaos ha ha ha. 
What's an interstellar-thingamajig? Buggered if I know. Kneel before my feet, doctor, kiss them now. Oh, mistress, I thought you'd never ask. The doctor proceeds to kiss the Rana's feet, grunting a little. Rose looks disgusted. This is no time for your pervy foreplay. Everybody run. Rose hurls a vase at the Rani, which knocks the daft troll up over, then everybody follows Feiste Rose as she bounds upstairs. As they run down the darkened passageway of the old house, Rose bursts through a door, and is shocked to see young Ned the groom, played by Deck from Andon Deck, in bed with Captain Jack Harkness. Jack, what are you doing? Harder, harder, mm, it's so hard. Harder, harder, oh 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 Ma, never miss an opportunity as the rent boy said to the bishop. Meanwhile in another part of the old gloomy house Alistair, played by Adam Rickett, is hiding in a wardrobe with Alec the gamekeeper. Why is Alistair a shameless tramp? He's not a tramp, he's enjoying his twenties. It's coming oh it's getting closer. Yes good I always give good head especially to the gentry. Suddenly there is a loud bang followed by the eerie clanking of armor. It's it's the ghost. Into the room lurches a doctor dressed in a suit of armor. He pulls open the wardrobe door and grins and ainly his visor up. Oh it's you. Give the lad a swift one up the jacksy. Of course it's me. How else am I to protect myself from stinking aliens sept in this get up? Now let's find Rose, Daphne and the others before the Rani gets to them. They all run downstairs the doctor stalling at the top, only to tumble headfirst down in his armor. Oh ee 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 bugger. The doctor lands smack bang on top of the Rani, and flattens the daft beams under the heavy armor. Well that armor's damp and harada. Everybody out. The others come running out, and Daphne stands coolly over the doctor smoking a cigarette from her ultra-expensive Edwardian cigarette holder. I do hope you intend to clear up this mess after you sweetie it's so undignified. Sorted. Rose, escort the Rani back to the Tard is while I get this metal off. We'll dump the old trout in 13th century Mongolia and strand her there. What about all the aliens and stuff? You can't just leave them here to attack these poor people. Yes, I can. You can't, it's just wrong. No, it ain't. Excuse me, darlings, but you seem to be forgetting something in all of this. What? What? The orchids during all of this ghastly running about, nobody has checked the orchids. They all run into the orchid house. Daphne, Alistair, Alec, the Doctor, Rose and assorted servants. As they enter a strange groaning sound can be heard amid the foliage. Oh my poor orchids are in pain. However as they peer over the plants, Captain Jack Harkness lifts his head and grins in the midst of a passionate encounter with James the attractive young stableman. Oh why I like man, harder, harder it's so hard. How the heck did he get here? The Rani brought him here to alter the course of human history, cool eh? Suddenly a massive pulsing sound grips the house coming from outside. Pulse pulse screech pulse pulse. On um, what's that? Oh just a bit of pulsing. Everyone runs out of the orchid house and out of the gloomy mansion into the front grounds. A huge spaceship is landing in the grounds. The rush of air grass blowing into their faces. It's coming into my face. Been there done that. Alistair shivers in the cold and lets Jack take him in his manly arms. While Cordelia elegantly finishes her cigarette. My lobelias and chrysanthemums. That vulgar thing will crush the poor dears. I'll blast the blighter with my twelve bore. Suddenly a loud cackling can be heard from the doorway. It's the revived reviled Rani. Cackle cackle cackle, did you think I thought of this scheme all alone you're about to meet my friends, and before this night is over you will all be dead as a putrefied muffin and the human race enslaved? Cackle cackle cackle. She's so masterful. Never mind that. Who are these things? Dunno. Well how can we stop them? Dunno. 